One of the things that I wanted to do on this trip was to try something that I had never thought I would do. And when I got to the Tetons, I found that something. I thought I'd try something new and exciting. A plant-based sun-dried tomato pesto. Wait, no, not that one. This. I'm about to go backpacking 20 miles alone up this mountain, so wish me luck. The trail I did was a giant loop, and I was splitting it up into two days, spending one night about as far out as I could go before finishing the loop the next day. The plan for day one was to get over the entire mountain range and down to a campsite inside the valley. All right, time for a day of backpacking. I've never backpacked this far, and I've never backpacked in grizzly territory, so it shall be interesting, and hopefully I survive. <laughs> So today I will be hiking approximately 12 miles and I'm doing the hardest stretch today. It's like all uphill. So far I've made it about four miles in and it's not, not too bad honestly yet. This hike is absolutely gorgeous. Just surrounded by mountains. It's so cool. 5.7 miles in now, and still going pretty strong, honestly. Having some lunch now, and gonna take a break for a little bit. I'm over halfway done for the day, which is nice. And I don't have too much more uphill to go because it's so far been only uphill. So it's definitely been exhausting. I'm starting to feel it for sure now. I've now been hiking for like five and a half hours, I think. It has been fun, but it's been very exhausting considering the entire thing has been uphill so far. But up there, that is as high as I need to go. And then after that, I'm just going downhill the rest of the time. So just gotta get up there and then it should be pretty easy from here on out. Now 10,000 feet up. I've only got about a half mile left of uphill. So we're almost there. But whew, is it exhausting? Definitely one of the hardest physical things I've ever done, I'd say. But it's been so cool at the same time. Feel the breeze as I walk down the shore. Feel the touch of the Well, I finally made it to my campsite for the night. 12.6 miles later, and I'd say it's a pretty good campsite. Can't complain about that view. Well, I've got my tent all set up now, ready for a night of sleeping in the wilderness. Hopefully we have no wildlife encounters throughout the night. That would be nice if we did not. And hopefully it's just a nice, peaceful night and just enjoy it out here. I'm having some dinner now on this rock away from my tent so my tent doesn't smell like food. <laughs> I've got a plain tortilla here, super exciting. I grabbed them last minute because I was like, maybe I want a tortilla, why not? And it's kind of good, can't lie.
Well, it's morning time now, and I had no disturbances during the night. It was actually very peaceful. It got pretty cold out, but I stayed warm, so that was good. I'm all bundled up, and I've got a pretty good sleeping quilt. So, yeah, it was a pretty comfortable night, actually. So now we are going to pack everything up and head on our way, and maybe we'll see some wildlife along the way, hopefully. They're usually out in the mornings, and it's morning, so the real test will be if my body can handle even putting my backpack on again. Uh, I can already definitely tell that my whole like shoulder area is very sore, but it's seven miles today, and it's downhill, so it should be a bit of an easier day than yesterday. Well, I got my tent packed up, and I am ready to move on for the day. But it's just crazy of how I even came out here. Like, I was doubting it so many times before I did. Like, I was like, eh, I don't know. I'll probably just take a day hike. I don't know if I want to backpack out there. That's a long hike. And I seriously almost didn't do it just because I was so held back by like this fear of so many things. Like, what if it's too hard? What if it's rains? What if it's like a grizzly bear attacks me in the night? And I just had so many of these fears that were honestly almost holding me back. And there's so many times in life you just gotta be like, all right, oh well, and just like push it away and just go do it anyway. And I feel like this is such a big thing outside of my comfort zone. This whole trip is, honestly. And especially just like backpacking out such a distance to sleep alone in grizzly bear territory is freaky. It's honestly really freaky. But I'm so glad that I did it. And I, I know that if I didn't do it, I would have regretted it. And I don't want to live my life with regrets. I don't want to be old one day and be like, oh, I wish I could have done this when I had the chance or when I was physically able to. Like, I'm sure when I'm 70 years old, I wouldn't be able to physically do this. I don't know, maybe I would. I would hope that I would, but you never know what life is going to happen. And you never, you never really know. So it's like, I have this chance right now to go do it. And the opportunity awaits. And I either have to take it and go do it, or I have to watch it slip by. And this is one of the things that I had to go and I had to grab and I had to take it. But yeah, the whole anxiety aspect is so hard to overcome sometimes. It really is, especially because that's, that can be the only thought that you have in your mind is every negative outcome of what can go wrong and it's so hard to see like the positive outlook of what kind of awesome experience you could get out of it. And so many of those negative what ifs are simply that, like they're just what ifs and they're just these very limited chance situations that are probably not gonna happen. And you just have to remind yourself that a lot of times in life, the worst outcome is not the outcome. And I guess this kind of proves this to myself. Like I was thinking I was gonna get stuck on the trail I wouldn't be able to physically do it it would start I don't know downpouring and then a grizzly bear would come and attack me and eat me like that could have happened but it didn't and that was definitely the worst outcome but it was not the outcome and so I guess this is just a big reminder to myself and was kind of a big test for myself to really show myself that I could push that anxiety out of the way and do something that I wanted to do and prove myself that I could, I could do this, and I, this is something I could do physically and mentally, and I'm just so glad that I did. After spending a night alone in the wilderness, I was ready for day two of hiking. The plan for the day was to finish the rest of the loop and get back to the car. The views were still amazing, and I was even lucky enough to encounter some wildlife. There's a bear right on the trail. I'm finally back to the parking lot. <laughs> finally. <laughs> and after 20 miles round trip, I had made it back. I treated myself to a good meal and even somewhere nice to sleep. I made it to a hotel because I deserve a break. <laughs> And it feels so nice to lay on an actual bed and be able to sit up. Like, I can actually sit up and not have my head. So that's really cool. I 
gonna go stock up on some groceries now while I'm in a town. So today's one of those treat yourself kind of days. Because I've been on the road, well, this is my 14th day on the road. So two weeks, two weeks celebration at a hotel with pizza. But yeah, it's been kind of exhausting, like living out of my car and tent and you know, all of that. So it's nice to have a break once in a while and make it feel more like a real vacation. <laughs> Good morning. Hello from the wonderful hotel room. I had a great night's sleep last night and it was very nice to have a break. So right now I am transferring a bunch of footage over onto my computer because a lot of my cards are either full or getting full. So doing all of that, plus it'll be nice to have it all backed up. So in case all of my devices decide to break or get stolen, I'll have my data backed up and all of my stuff from this trip won't be gone because that would be pretty sad. Today I'm going to be driving all day pretty much. I'm going to be driving through Idaho and I think I'm going to stay in some national forest like in the northern part of Idaho, like the very the narrow part, the tip, whatever they call that. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, just getting that finished up and I'll be on my way. So I'm in Idaho still. And yeah, pretty cute campsite in a national forest. Not too bad, gonna probably make some dinner and probably go to sleep. So what else do I do? <laughs> My pasta will be plain no longer. Finally got some sauce for it. So I was gonna have a salad with my pasta, but I don't have any dressing or anything for a salad other than this bag of salad mix. So like instead of doing a dish, I'll just eat it out of the bag my hands, I guess. Not the best salad, but it's like the camping salad, you know? The sauce is not good. Do not buy this. Like I thought I'd try something new and exciting. A plant-based sun-dried tomato pesto. Like that's going for a lot. But yeah, it it's not good. That's okay, you live and you learn. That's part of trying new things. And I guess that's kind of the whole theme of this video. It's so easy to get stuck in the routine of life, the things that make us comfortable. But sometimes those moments that you force yourself to be uncomfortable end up being some of the best memories. I just realized that my laundry pods decided to burst in my bag and get everything in the bag covered in laundry detergent. And I went to go sit up on my bed and it also got laundry detergent on it. So that's pretty fun. 